then uh, not hearing anybody, we will uh, turn the floor over to Mr. Robert Gallegos. Hello, Robert. Unmute yourself, share your screen, and, uh, and entertain us, please, sir. So, so Bob has sort of a very uh, elaborate system here that he's, he's talking to us through his phone, but he's giving us his presentation through his computer. So can everyone, uh, can, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So uh, uh, since, uh, since the uh, RCP&E took over the west end of the Canadian Pacific uh, DM&E line across South Dakota, there's been a pair of trains running that have been sort of fascinating because they're carrying a, a lot of the uh, a lot of the traffic bound for the Black Hills of South Dakota. Um, for bentonite, uh, there's a lot of grain moving on the line. There's ethanol trains. So here's a little look at uh, uh, in 2018, uh, Karen and I decided to head west and follow the follow the uh, dm and &E all the way to Rapid City and uh, up into the Bentonite Hills. And um, uh, this is a little uh, look at, uh, at that, uh, uh, at the route. So let me give you a little history first. The, uh, when I moved to the Midwest, and actually a little before, um, the uh, Dakota, Minnesota, and Eastern was operating the former uh, Northwestern track out to the Black Hills. Um, you know, they were one of those typical short line startups, had a bunch of eyeball power. As you can see here, we got a Milwaukee SD10, Milwaukee uh, GP20 rebuild of some sort. Um, a, a former nor nickel plate Jeep 18 and uh, um, the Northwestern flavor of uh, the SD10. But if you look at the cars there, you see a bunch of those small hoppers. Those were specifically for uh, cement service out of Aberdeen, Minnesota. Um, behind those are some tanks from online uh, uh, industries including corn syrup but the cars behind those consolidated paper would get wood chips from from mills out in the Black Hills and those would actually be hauled all the way to uh, Wisconsin Rapids uh, really odd mix of traffic and of course there were you know the usual grain and and that sort of thing um, in in uh, 98, I mean, 88, um, here's one of their typical freights rolling through Sleepy Eye, Minnesota. And um, as you can see, they were, one of their problems was that they were, they had paper boundaries that they couldn't interchange uh, with certain lines and they were stuck with whatever cars Chicago Northwestern would give them. Uh, it became a bit of an issue later on when they couldn't get cars. Um, here's uh, another early, uh, this is another eight, 1988 uh, uh, shot from my first visit out here. And they even leased power from the Sioux line. And that Sioux unit in the distance, uh, another Jeep, had just come into Owatonna, Minnesota. Um, off of a line that's now abandoned called the uh, the D and I, I don't know, the D, no, the uh, M and I um, subdivision of old Milwaukee line. So actually the first train I ever caught on the DM and E happened to be this little passenger extra. It was a rare mileage trip uh, with the, uh, um, uh, uh, High Iron Tours was touring the line, and they were going up every little branch line and 
and siding just so that these guys can get their rare mileage. This is uh, at Oatana. So I lucked into it and just sort of hung out on the railroad for a few days. By the early 90s, though, the trains were getting longer, traffic was coming back. And uh, as you can see, there's uh, four X Milwaukee units here, including two SD40 2s. Um, that sort of became the norm for a while, except they started painting the SD40 2s. There's one of the, uh, one of the, uh, the, they, they ended up affiliated with the Iowa, Chicago, and Eastern as well after the sale from uh, Washington Industries. And uh, the uh, middle unit there is actually one of the IC&E units that had been running up on the DM&E. So this is uh, downtown Milwaukee, Menominee River Draw. So back to train 470 and 471. This is train 470 coming east through Milwaukee. Um, actually, this is just uh, like three or four years ago. It was the last, uh, the last one of the last uh, SD60s. Um, if you notice, there's a rebuilt SD60 trailing. But uh, um, you'll see the second car is a DM&E covered hopper. There's a grain hopper, a tank two bentonite cars, and then a string of guns. And the blue guns and a lot of the black ones, those are all DM&E cars, and they go, they go to various, um, various uh, uh, industries around Brookings, uh, South Dakota. So train, D, uh, train 470 and 471 are really the, the, the main trains on the line for general freight. Um, Right before all the DM and E power um, made its last stand, uh, uh, the power was running through uh, Milwaukee to Chicago pretty frequently. This is one in two, 2018 um, with one of the new uh, the new Ardvark um, uh, SD22 Ecos uh, or Jeep 22 Ecos, and uh, just a mixed bag lash up, but. Uh, that had become standard for quite a while. It's obviously passing Miller Brewing. Once the RCP and E came for, came into being, uh, as you can see by the lead unit there, it's 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 stenciled the uh, RCP and E, and it's the Rapid City Pure and Eastern is the name of the railroad. Uh, this is train four seventy. Eastbounds are always even and three of the freshly painted RCP and E units. Jesse and Wyoming, when they bought that West End, they made they made they 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 made no delays in getting things painted into the uh, corporate orange. So in 2018, here's uh here's uh what we woke up to in uh Waseca, Minnesota. Um the 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 all the power all the local power had been already been CPized um, with uh, the the uh, SD22 Ecos and a uh, Jeep 38 there, but um, uh, huge influx of uh, CP cars and a lot of uh, leased cars as well. This, that's sort of normal for that. Um, still a few remnants of the DM&E, uh, Russell Plow, and um, a uh, former Northwestern push plow that they may have, I'm not sure if they got that from the Northwestern or if that had come from uh, uh, somewhere else. So at uh, that later that morning in uh, New Ulm, I kept hearing the 471 on the radio, but we weren't sure where he was until we got closer to New Ulm. And uh, hmm. um, here it is at New Ulm uh, Station, and they're uh, they're actually switching cars in the yard. You see the Bentonite cars off to the left. 
and uh, ethanol behind the uh, uh, power. When ethanol, when the ethanol boom hit, um, the DM and E cornered a lot of that traffic, and there's quite a few. Uh, there are quite a few uh, plants along the line. So 470 is is the main road freight, but there are a lot of ethanol and grain extras as well. A little bit around New Ulm, uh, got a few shots of him switching uh, there with the uh, Valley Grain uh, uh, elevator. Um, the, sh the shot from the uh, from the opening uh, title page, and um, I shoot a lot of structures too, and I found this little Art Deco gas station that's just a perfect model modeling piece. So uh, I shot it from every conceivable angle. So I thought I'd throw that in here. It was just sort of interesting. So we latched on to uh, 471 and followed it west out through Sanborn. And... Um, that little uh, trailer is one of the, it was typical of, of operator stations along the, uh, along the uh, old Alco line. So there's the, uh, there's the uh, train rolling through Sanborn past the trailer depot. So Northwestern had those scattered all over the system. There's still one at Little Lake, um, uh, Michigan, too, that I know of. Um, a little bit broader view of Sanborn with the elevator, and it's a tip, you know, one of your typical grain towns in uh, southern Minnesota. So, and uh, there's the Bentonite cars, and uh, uh, following a couple of the uh, couple of the tanks, um, and the general use, you know, the, I'm a modeler, and that general use uh, siding that serves several industries is pretty typical of the towns out there. So sometimes they even use them as passing sightings if there's no uh, uh, shipper traffic on it. So South Dakota is flat, but not really. It's more of a undulating, um, undulating uh, countryside. This is a approaching Revere, uh, Revere, Minnesota. And that's actually a, uh, an ethanol plant um, uh, furnace stack in the background there. So And then a few miles past that point, the uh, CP trackage ends in the middle of a cornfield. Um, I call it the cornfield connection, but uh, there's just a simple passing siding and the two railroads swap. There's a volume thing here. I don't know where the hell. Well, what? Just... Oh. <laughs> the uh, the the uh, the two railroads just swap entire trains, so this train. Once the power swap is finished, we'll become train 470 all the way to Chicago. So uh, here's, uh, here's um, that's what it looks like. It's literally in the middle of a cornfield. And by now, the power had cut off. They take it into Tracy. This is all at Tracy, Minnesota. They take it in. They, 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 if the power is running elephant style like that, they turn it on a Y. And the Y is the remnants of another uh, corn, or re another branch that used to come off at Tracy. Um, I had to shoot the, uh, the ancient motel, um, the Motel Modern, Cozy Grove Motel, and it's modern, I guess for the 30s. And another attraction in Tracy is the Tracy Depot Museum called Wheels Across the Prairie with a fake cabbage stack on a northwestern, uh, uh, small northwestern steam engine. And I'm not even sure it was a northwestern engine, to tell you the truth. 
do like that they preserved a sanding tower and uh, um, the station and a speeder. There's some neat stuff there. So um, following that point, uh, there was nothing else west of there for the rest of the day. So we, uh, we sped ahead because we had a little bit of a schedule to meet and uh, uh, woke, up and woke up to this in Brookings. The, uh, the local uh, goes on duty at uh, seven or so. And um, most of their locals are Jeep 40s or Jeep 38s. And um, they, uh, they take advantage of the high speed mainline when they're, uh, when they're uh, switching. <laughs> This guy was shooting past the depot backwards at about 40 miles an hour, heading to the west end of town. Uh, Brookings is an interesting place. There's a lot of traffic there to be had, but uh, we didn't really have a ton of time to, to spend shooting it because we knew we had to be west um, on, on time. So. Um, so we did make a few stops along the way, though. This is uh, Lake Preston, um, South Dakota. And um, interesting uh, cinder block depot. Uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, pretty, grain, pretty big grain elevator uh, getting ready to load a unit train. Most of this was in October. So um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it was busy. It was busy. It was prime season, and uh, west of here, the line did not disappoint us at all. Here's looking the other way at Lake Preston. You can see the fertilizer shed on the left and uh, uh, the hodgepodge uh, fleet of cars. Another uh, former Northwestern Depot's uh, been turned into a museum at DeSmet. Um, Unfortunately, being October, most of these uh, little online depots and such uh, museums were already closed for the season. So we got to Huron, home of the world's largest pheasant. Um, the former Northwestern Depot still stands, and it's a pretty impressive building. And it's also the uh, RCP&E's main shop, um, main roundhouse and servicing facility. As you can see, um, you can see another unit inside the uh, roundhouse. And um, there's still a lot of wood in that roundhouse. It's uh, all the main support columns are wood, but it does have brick walls. I was a little surprised to see that. <laughs> Um, and of course, you know, anything on Genesee and Wyoming, if it doesn't move, it gets painted orange. So um, uh, if that pigeon up on the uh, standing tower had sat there long enough, it would have been painted orange or yellow. So uh, you never know. This is from the uh, other side of the tracks, just looking at some of the power that had come in overnight. And... Uh, I'd say on hand there were probably 25 uh, SD40-2s, every last one of them in orange. This one was being given a spin on the turntable, and the turntable was still, the turntable control cab is still in DM and E blue. So uh, there's still a little hint of DM and E at least. But you can see the wood columns inside the, uh, at the entry to the uh, engine, uh, Roundhouse there. One more quick shot there. Now, 13 miles west is a town called Wolsey. And it wouldn't be so, it, it would just be a couple of sightings if it weren't for the fact that it's a BNSF interchange. And when the, when the, uh, when the various mergers uh, happened, the uh, the uh, paper barriers to this interchange, some of them were lifted, and 
they can uh, they can now interchange with BNSF here, which uh, back in the DM and E days, um, for a while they, they they did do some interchange there, but it was sort of restricted. So, um, you know, I I get distracted easily, and uh, if you notice that BN hopper, there's a fret on it, little red fret on hanging on the coupler. So I was wondering about that, and you, with the hills, you couldn't see this guy. As you can see, you can't see to the rear end of his train, but uh, we kept hearing something switching on the radio, and uh, we caught up to this guy just, you know, a mile north, and um, took one shot of him with the, uh, one shot of him here, and he just sat. And we decided, well, let's start heading west and see if we can make up a little time. Well, of course, you know, when you say that, things change. We got as far as Wessington, another 20 miles or so. And here comes the, uh, here comes one of the westbound road freights, uh, our eastbound road freights. This would eventually become 470 on the CP. So we figured, well, let's go back and uh, get a few more shots of it. And uh, sure enough, you know, we followed it along uh, US 14 there, or 12. It's either 12 or 14. I don't remember off the top of my head. But uh, a couple of shots as he uh, clattered across the diamonds there in, uh, in Woolsey. Um, sort of a neat, uh, a neat uh, old fertilizer tank uh, there at the uh, crossing. He crawled across the diamonds at about 10 miles an hour. So we had plenty time to to uh take a few shots around the around the uh crossing so as i get distracted easily i i heard that the uh bnsf train had only gotten a couple of miles out of town so we followed them north just a little bit as you can see in the upper photo um and uh while i was waiting for him to get to this spot um, I saw something shiny in the shiny and then something red in a in the drainage ditch I'm standing in and uh, I ended up with a Milwaukee Road uh, uh, feather switch stand target so that's right now that's here at the house <laughs> but um, we also ha had a an Indian attack with uh, they had bad marksmanship and uh, the rest of the day was pretty much what you see in the bottom right photo, the um, the uh, grain trucks kicking up dust on dirt roads uh, coming up to the tracks. But it was really pretty out there. We got to pier and caught up to uh, the, uh, the, the westbound. Now, out here, they tend to run more road, more extras, and this was uh, actually... Uh, this was actually the road freight, though, going west. So to sum it up, you know, eastern South Dakota is fascinating, flat with undulating grades, loaded with grain traffic, and great for shooting if you're patient. So, so next morning, we get up at uh, Rapid City, and um, this is the little roundhouse that greets you at their facility. They, there's no tracks leading into it anymore but um, they do still service power um, in the area. I think a lot of the reason they're not using the roundhouse here is they've upgraded the track to 49 mile an hour standards. I think they run at about 40, but we caught them fudging that a few times over the course of the, the few days we were there. And uh, again, Jeep 38s, Jeep 40 rebuilds, Various Jeeps, uh, this guy's working the uh, north end of the yard in Rapid City, which, which, is a, which is about a mile and a half, two miles south of downtown. So we'll finish up here with the, uh, with the train that I actually knew was running and sort of had a schedule for, the Belfush Turn. This is where a lot of that uh, bentonite Clay, um, this is the train that hauls it. They serve a lot of grain elevators up 
up the the line. This used to be the tail end, west end of the of the northwestern. This was one of their 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 uh, farthest west branches. And um, let's uh, take a look. We started heading north, um, and uh, we had to, this day. We didn't didn't see it. Didn't see a whole lot this day. So we did some other things, um, but then uh, uh, the next the next uh, we had already missed this guy coming into town. Uh, this is the only shot. So we headed north, and he was running early. And we got north of Sturgis, and um, this is where we caught him. Was where he crossed the highway up there. Um, and the orange units really, uh, really stand out against those hillsides. As you can see, uh, the fall colors were a little past their peak already. Um, all the grass was brown, all the grain was brown. Um, this guy had, 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 uh, was coming south and he, he held up here north of Sturgis because they actually thought they had derailed. <laughs> and um, they had gone into emergency and uh, there were guys, there was one guy went on the ground and started walking the line and they found that uh, they had a brake hose issue, they got a hose. So in the meantime, I had these guys uh, get a little, uh, get a little uh, um, uh, curious about why I was there. So they finally rolled south down through Sturgis, past the uh, South Dakota National Cemetery on the north side of um, just a few miles out of Rapid. A uh, couple of more shots crossing the valley. And um, that was it for the day with that train. But we decided uh, we had heard uh, we'd, we'd heard another train that had was coming in and this this was for the remnants of 471 uh that we photographed there in in rapid city and um uh they were they were they were they stopped to drop some cars at an elevator and at um box elder south dakota and made a run made a run for sunset here So um, when they hit the crossing, they were doing almost 50 miles an hour. So it was a pretty impressive show for three old SD40s smoking it up on the South Dakota Plains. So thanks for watching. That's, that's my show. Well, thank you, Bob. Um, let's, uh, let's give uh, Bob a round of applause. Yeah. Putting up the little... Thing there, and uh, any any real quick questions or comments for Bob? Um, just uh, unmute yourself and come on forward. Yeah, I just got a quick question since we're with all these wonderfully astute individuals in railroading. Why did the you know the these guys go to Tracy, Minnesota, of all places to pick up over the line? Is that just what the CP wanted, or is it a money thing, or? Because it had something to do with, from what I remember reading, it had something to do with the BN interchange, BNSF interchange, um, west of Tracy. I think I think um, Jesse and Wyoming wanted to be able to interchange with BNSF. Uh, hey, okay, Bob, so, you wanna... so they would have been further. So they wanted to come that far east. Otherwise, they would have even stayed farther west than that. I, I, yeah, I really, I really don't know. I know there's a lot of traffic out there. There's a lot of, there's actually a lot of traffic that moves east off of the, I mean, west off of the RCP and E and mm -hmm. on to BNSF at Shadron, Nebraska. They have a, they, they do run south out of Rapid City. So, right. I just, I just thought it was odd that the CP wanted to keep it that far west, I guess. I figured they would. You know, maybe come further back to the well, east, but at Tracy, there's there's something like seven huge ethanol plants out there. 
oh. and some grain processors. And, and they basically cherry picked the grain and ethanol traffic out to a point and then the RCP and E has it from that point on, but there aren't as many uh, there aren't as many uh, uh, shippers or many of those shippers out that way. Well, thank you, Bob, and uh, thank you, Terry, for the question. Any other questions for Bob before we uh, we uh, we have one more presentation to do here? Um, one thing um, that uh, they didn't paint blue is in Minnesota City at the, the CP connection there, the switch stand still says uh, DM and E on it. And if I remember correctly, it's still blue. Oh, cool. I haven't checked that out. I'll have to look at that next time I'm out there. Huh. Oh, very good. Well, thank you, Bob. Uh, thank you for uh, your presentation tonight. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, good. Uh, thumbs up from, from everybody. Good work, Bob. Um, so, Again, uh, to all the members and guests who are with us tonight, this is our first attempt at doing a virtual meeting. Um, our attendance uh, rivals uh, what we would have, actually it's better than what we would, we would typically have in a, um, uh, in a regular in-person meeting. So thank you for, th thank you all. I, I think it's very convenient for a lot of our members who are uh, from outside of the area, just to, to dial in here on the computer. And uh, to the new faces, also thank you very much for, for joining us tonight. Um, please do consider joining us if, if we are what, uh, if, if, we, if, if, we, uh, if we, we tickle your fancy in, uh, in, in regards to uh, uh, your uh, entertainment and so forth.